I'm Lynn Hirschberg. I'm the editor-at-large at the New York Times Magazine. And today we're looking at the breakthrough performances from 2007 in the assassination of Jesse James by the outlaw Robert Ford. What we were particularly struck by was Casey Affleck's mood shifts between being a fan of Jesse James and then a stalker of Jesse James. There was a subtlety in this that was both creepy and somehow identifiable at the same time. Julie Christie, in a way from her, plays a woman who's suffering from Alzheimer's, who forgets her husband and falls in love with another Alzheimer's patient. She has to lose her memory and somehow become another person. Most people who are under the age of 40 don't remember Julie Christie because she last won the Oscar in the 60s. It's as if she has begun her career all over again with this performance. To be a combination of John Lennon and Paul McCartney in a movie is basically asking someone to commit career suicide. Jim Sturgis in Across the Universe transforms Beatles songs that you feel like you know as well as you know your own name. He makes them his own. He makes the performance riveting. If he can master an American accent, he will have one of the biggest careers that anyone will ever witness. Super Bad is one of those moments where you realize that the rhythm of comedy can be completely particular to the individual. Michael Sarah gives the part so much poignancy and so much depth that you think of him as being a leading man as opposed to just another high school senior. Sienna Miller starred in Interview. The film is about a celebrity who's being interviewed by a journalist who doesn't want to be interviewing her, and she turns the tables on him. Sienna Miller, who has been a staple of the tabloids, brings a kind of awareness to this character that is not what you would expect, and it does represent a true breakthrough. Marion Cotillard in La Vie en Rose plays Edith Piaf, probably one of the most well-known singers of all time. She manages to take the character and make her both very big and very small. There is no man I know who saw Knocked Up without thinking that they could be Seth Rogen, they could get the great blonde girl, and they could change their life. And I think Seth Rogen has created a character in this movie that will carry Seth throughout the next 50 years of his career. James McAvoy in Atonement is a great romantic lead. You feel that he's doomed but yet you can't not be attracted to his sense of honor, his sense of dignity. And like all great romantic leads, he shines in this movie because he can both be emotionally affecting and deeply romantic. Hal Holbrook in Into the Wild. It's about a boy, Chris McCandless, who goes off to live in the wild on his own. And before he goes to Alaska, he has a relationship with a much older man played by Hal Holbrook. And Holbrook tries to convince him not to go. He's the person who knows what would be best for this boy. And it's terribly affecting because at the end of the film, he turns out to be right. Paul Dano is one of the best young actors that is working today. But in some ways, everything Paul Dano does has been almost a breakthrough. In last year's Little Miss Sunshine, he barely spoke through the entire film. And yet every scene he was in, he commanded. In this movie, he talks quite a lot. He's in There Will Be Blood, and he plays an evangelist who is out to convert Daniel Day-Lewis. Paul Dano holds his own in those encounters, and more than that, becomes a haunting presence throughout the film. Ever so often, you see a movie, and you immediately know that somebody is special, that they're a star, and Ellen Page is this year's special star. In Juno, she has created a new kind of heroine. She's smart, she's unique, she's self-conscious, and she's brave enough to decide to keep a baby when she's 16 years old. And the conviction that she brings to every single line that the character has to say transforms the movie, and it wouldn't be the same movie without her. Tang Wei in Lust Caution. This is a very tricky part because half the movie, she has to be a spy and half the movie she has to be romantically and sexually entangled with the man she's spying on. And the part demands great dexterity, shifting the character from one type of involvement to a completely different kind of involvement. 
Amy Ryan in Gone Baby Gone plays perhaps the worst mother ever, and every bad thing this mother does is somehow fascinating. She's so authentic that sometimes it's hard to believe she's actually acting. Jennifer Jason Lee is a shapeshifter. She's the type of actress where you forget that it's Jennifer Jason Lee and she immediately fuses with the characters that she's playing, and it's exactly the case in Margot at the Wedding. She plays the younger sister of a very outsized personality. She manages to give the part empathetic quality that anyone who's ever been around an outsized personality can understand. Josh Brolin in No Country for Old Men plays a character that stumbles upon millions of dollars in a drug deal that's gone wrong. His ingenuity and his brilliance in the face of a cold-hearted killer reinvents the idea of a Western figure, something like a cowboy, but a new kind of cowboy.